Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And um, even though I'm about to show you a Christmas <laughs> a Christmas item, the one we're gonna make today is made with papers that are a little more fall themed, but to try to show you, you can really make these with any papers. So I got a request from someone who actually purchased a folio I had made quite a few years ago. Um, she purchased it in my Etsy shop and she emailed me recently saying, can you, can you do a tutorial of how to make one of these um, uh, on your YouTube channel? And I was like, well, I'm gonna give it my best shot. Um, it's been a while since I've made that one or seen it, um, but I do believe I made it with uh, the Mente Berry Licious paper, so if any of you guys remember that one. Um, but all it is is it's a folio made with 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. And again, depending on how you do your pockets and your belly band, yours might look a little bit different. And the one I made her, I told her it probably would not be exactly the same. This paper, cute. Um, but it would be similar and it would come together, you know, in a similar way. I did some little stacked pockets here that I think are cute. Um, so we're going to make one of these and it is, um, it's not hard. It's a little involved. You know, you got to get your papers measured. It flips open like this. Look at that Santa. I am kind of getting excited about starting my Christmas crafts for the season. Um, there's large pieces um, that can fit in here like this. So anyway, there, there's lots you can do with this design. I did a similar one fairly recently for Pink Monarch prints, not using 12 by 12 inch paper. Um, what, what I did was I just used um, a regular eight and a half by 11, so it's a smaller size folio, but a similar concept. You know what, we're gonna need this one out for me to remember um, the design and some of the pockets we're gonna make, so we'll, we'll keep it untied. But let me show you, okay, so this paper, in case you're interested in that collection, that's a Stamperia paper and it's classic Christmas. So that's that one, because I know somebody will ask and that's perfectly fine, but I'm trying to d do better about telling you guys what I'm using. Now, the one we're gonna make today is a paper pack I have been keeping and I love it and I haven't made anything with it. I have just had this one and we're going to use it today. And it is called, it's also Stamperia and it's Casa Granada. Um, and it looks like there's like a bunch of pomegranates and flowers and some nature scenes and I haven't cut these out yet. Um, quote cards. And I thought these would be fun for some type of, um, calendar journal so I've anyway I've got these two that I haven't cut everything else believe it or not in this kit I have cut out so I've got the main pages that we're going to need to construct our folio the pages cut we're going to need for our pockets because you see there are quite a few pieces and then over here I have a lot of the extras that I've cut out. There's a sheet. Um, it's one of the covers, actually, of the kit of the fussy cuts. And I sat here yesterday and just did a lot of prep for this video to get it ready for you guys. So anyway, we're going to have fun making this one and decorating it using the paper kit. So that that's what I'm using. You use whatever paper you have. You could, if you have large... Um, Coffee table books, you can even make one of these like with book page, like the large book page if you want to make one this size. So, um, you know, you could do it with a like a black 12 by 12 card stock or a craft color or a white, you know, just a solid color and then decorate. So, again, I'm just showing you the papers I'm using and I'm going to give you all the measurements and, and how we're going to make this um, with, with no problem. Okay. I get some things out of my way. Now, I will also, in the description of the video, have for you the, the main measurements. Um, and if there, there's only a couple of times that we score most things, we're just folding in half, but there are a couple of pages we'll score. I'll have all of that listed for you in the description. So if you want to um, follow along the video and, and look at that as well, um, that may be helpful. So I hope that helps you. Okay, so for the cover, the piece that is going to be the cover of our journal. We're gonna start there. So that piece, pick out a piece of paper and you're gonna wanna cut it to 12 inches by nine inches. All right, 
So look at your paper and you want to leave it 12 inches. Um, or I'm trying to think of the best way to say that nine inches. The, the, if it has a direction, which mine does, I left it wide on the horizontal, okay? Because I'm going to be folding this in half. That's all we're going to do is fold this in half. And it's nine, 12 inches wide. So our journal, our folio, whatever we end up calling this, you could score this if you want to, is going to be six inches by nine inches, the main folio, okay? So it's quite large and it's gonna hold all kinds of treasures. I think these would be good like as a memory keeper too, like you could put photos and things in one of these. Now, I did not fold mine very well. I can already see that. So if you're worried about that, score it before you start folding. Okay, so this is our cover. Eventually, we are gonna come through and put those big pockets and different things on here, but for now, we're gonna just stay with this being our cover. All right, fold it in half. The next page that you're gonna need, it measures 11 inches, so 11 inches wide by eight inches tall. And if you see, we just made it one inch smaller. So you have a half an inch smaller all the way around, okay? So again, look at your paper and think how you want to Fold it until we sew it together, you know, or start adding pockets and stuff. You can kind of change your mind if you want to. Like I'm thinking I'm gonna do mine this way so that when you open it up, we'll see this, the, the pomegranates next. But if I wanted to, we could do it this way and see this pretty green pattern. All right, there we go. So that's the second page. So just, you know, stack those together and set them aside as we go. Now, the next piece that you're going to be working with, look how tall this one is. This one is going to be 10 inches wide, and you're going to leave it the full 12 inches tall. Because this sheet right here, where I'm going to show you how we're going to start, it's going to turn into two big deep pockets um, and then be the right size to, to nest in here with these. So this one, we want to turn it on the 12 inch side. I'm looking at my notes because I do not want to confuse anybody on this. Um, this has a direction to it, and I want this to be the top of the page, right? And this is going to be the pocket that flips up like this, all right? So I have the top of my page to the right. Here, I can do it that way so you can see it. And um, so this side, I guess it has, depending on how you're looking at that pattern, you can see a direction, but it's easier with the teacups, I think. So I'm on the 12 inch side. And I'm going to score this one um, at four inches. All right. And I'm going to just flip mine over and score it again at four inches to help it hopefully not crack. All right. I'm going to need my scoreboard again in just a minute. So I'm going to set it there. Okay. So these are going to turn into my pockets. Now you're going to notice when I lay this on here, this one has that half an inch this way, but it's the same height. It's eight inches tall, and, and that's fine. I did that on purpose. Um, if you want yours to be shorter, um, you could either cut this to 11 inches instead of leaving it the full 12, or you could make your pocket even deeper if you wanted to. Now, we're also gonna have to fold this one in half, and you know what happens a lot of times when we end up with pockets like this. I did not cut out the fold on the one I just made. And let's look at that together for a second so you guys can follow what I'm talking about. Um, so I told you we were going to need this one. All right, here are those big deep pockets and it's sewn in. And sometimes when you fold the pocket up and then you fold it in half, all of this starts to bunch just a little bit. Um, a way around that 
is to cut out this little score line here and then glue this pocket down, these two pockets down. I didn't do it in this one. Do I regret it? Ugh. It kind of came together without a problem. It, it, it really is a personal choice. Um, and all I'm talking about is, is we could take our scissors and just trim a little teeny piece right out here and that it'll fold better. Why don't I, I don't know, and if you, can you see how it kind of starts to gap a little bit and look funky? So let's cut it out. I'll show you how to do that. If you don't feel like doing this, skip it. I'm gonna ink just so you can see where we're cutting. And I've done other projects where I cut out score lines. If you guys have watched other tutorials and other crafters do this too. So you just cut just a smidge to the right of the score line right up to this fold line, okay? And then just to the smidge of the left of it. And I just recorded a video where I cut out a bunch of these. Um, it was a one page wonder. So I don't know what order I'm posting all of these videos in, but if you've seen that, it's the same thing. Okay, now when we fold this together for this signature, this one won't have that weird gap. All right, it'll fold nicely in half. All right, so now we have the first three pages. The fourth page. Again, it's a. it looks like an interesting size, and it is. It is seven inches tall. So now it's one inch shorter than our last page. But again, I left it the full 12 inches because this one, we're gonna make two little side pockets like this. So you have to look at your paper and decide which way you wanna do it. So again, grab your scoreboard or your ruler, whatever you're gonna score with, lay it on the 12 inch side, and we're gonna score at one and a half inches, and I'm gonna score at 10 and a half. And that's just gonna give us one and a half inch little side pockets. Now on my Christmas one, I did do these a little bit different size because the paper that I used had a pattern on it that I didn't wanna lose, but I, li I like making them this size. Now this one I'm gonna really quick lay back on the scoreboard because I'm here and just score it at six inches, which is in half. Or fold it in, you can just fold it in half. You don't have to score it if you don't want to. All right. So, even when you score, I find it's best to be careful and try to line everything up before you crease it. Make sure everything looks straight. And now we're gonna have these two little pockets. All right, and this page is gonna fit right in there. All right, now that is, um, the, the main pages. Now, before we start talking about sewing this together or, you know, attaching it, I'm also going to show you how to make that flip out page, which I believe is this one. Yeah. Okay, so now this is going to be the page at the back that opens up like this. Okay, and again, I didn't I didn't want to cover this up. I could have added all kinds of pockets. You could add a scrap pad, a notepad. I did a belly band on this side. Again, all of the pockets and the extras really can be customized however you want. I'm going to do one for you, but keep that in mind. This piece of paper that you need for the flip out, it is eight and three quarter inches tall. So it is one quarter inch shorter than our journal cover. It's eight and three quarter inches tall. Okay, I hope you can see that. It's just a smidge shorter. And it is six inches wide. All right. Now grab that cover, leave your other pages, put them to the side. What we have to decide on is we're gonna put a hinge and this is going to attach 
to our journal and you just want to decide, you know, which, which side do you want um, the hinge to be on. And I want my journal to open up this way and then this will flip this way. So I am going to put a hinge for mine um, on the right hand side. Now, if I wanted it this way, no, yes, ah, don't, don't do as I say, not as I do, let's start over, or don't do as I say, wait until I do. The hinge, yes, I was correct, the hinge needs to be on the right hand side because then we're going to wrap it around and put it on. So all you need to know <laughs> is on this, on the six inch side, decide which way you want your paper to be. And I'm going to score it at five and a half inches. This is a six inch wide piece of paper and I'm gonna score it at five and a half. Now, again, if I wanted this on the front, I would have laid it in my scoreboard and scored it at five and a half so the hinge would be on this side. I hope that made sense. Um, but this is just gonna turn into a hinge, just like that, and then it's gonna flap open in my folio. And it's going to attach right here. Okay, now, before I start gluing anything down or doing anything, I do like to, um, whoa, I like to go ahead and round my corners because I like this one to have rounded corners. So, um, and if you're gonna ink, now's the time to think about inking. I am not gonna ink on camera because it just takes way too much time, but you know me later, I'll go back and ink it. Okay. So let's get all of our pages again. And then I'm gonna add the great big pockets before we sew together. And we're also gonna um, back the back. You know, I hate to have to cover that up. Let me see what I picked out. These are for my big pockets. And I think I picked this to put on the back because it stays with this theme. So it'll be okay. I just, I hate covering up that beautiful piece, but I like having the extra sturdiness and I like to cover up my hinge, but the, the back back piece is just for decoration. So it's absolutely not necessary if you want to skip it. All right. I'll give you the measurements of these big pocket and the backing piece here in a minute. All right. So if you're going to round your corners like I am, Go ahead and get your corner rounder. I'm going to use the half inch size and I'm just going to round the corners of each of these pages. And I have not glued the pockets down yet. Okay, so that's that page. This page, I keep knocking my corner rounder. Um, my Big Bite Chomp. I don't know what this is called, the chomper. What, what is it called? Corner chomper. It can go through multiple layers. If yours can't, um, it hopefully it can go through at least two layers, right? You got the two layers. But if yours is like mine and it will go through, you know, multiple layers, if you want to, you, you could, we could have um, folded these in half like this. Okay instead of leaving it open and just chomping all four. I'm just folding mine in half. Now I do have to kind of look at this one to remind myself what I'm doing here. And I think to make this, it not think, I know, to make this fit the way I want it to, with it folded, with the little hinge, you want to round the corner. I need to dump my corner chomper, obviously. It looks like it's getting very full. And I'm gonna go ahead and round the other side too, just so this page that is opening up into my journal will have the rounded corner, because I like that. Okay, all right. So pick these back up. And it's easy to know what order they're in because they do kind of nest together. 
okay? The next thing we're gonna do is we are going to glue a bunch of pockets and do the large pockets. So these side load ones, it's not hard. You're just gonna add glue to the top of each. And I'm leaving them big. Um, if you wanna run a bead of glue and make two little pockets, you could do that. I'm gonna leave mine kind of large. And if you wanted to, you could have made this pocket deeper. Again, I scored it at one and a half inches and 10 and a half inches, which um, gave us a one and a half inch pocket. You know, if you wanted to come over some or if there's a pattern of your paper you're trying to preserve, I'll show you what I did, then, you know, you can adjust the size of those. So if you'll notice this one, they're not even the same size and that's okay. I think that looks kind of cool. This one... I think is it's a two inch pocket and this one is a two and a half inch pocket and as you can see what I was trying to do is to keep these ornaments and this holly I wanted to um, it was a, kind of just this color paper um, with, with the page and I wanted the pockets to have the design so that's what I did and you can adjust yours this one I just did what I consider more of a traditional, just one and a half inch pockets for both. All right, so I don't wanna get anything upside down. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Now this one, we're gonna glue down as well. And these deep pockets, we're gonna add glue just to the two sides because I, we did trim this one out. With my original one, I didn't. And like I said, it did kind of buckle a little bit on me, but I just had to add glue to the two sides. And I am using my Lineco PVA wet white glue. If you need to or want to go look at that, it's linked in my Amazon storefront. And if you end up making a purchase, it's no cost to you, but I'm there, they make me say this. I know you guys get tired of hearing it. Um, I do get a few pennies if you make a purchase, but it's no cost to you. But you can go see the supplies that I use. Okay. All right, we've got those two pages. I'm gonna flip, get those out of the way. This one doesn't have anything yet. We have to glue. All right, now I'm back to the cover. Let's go ahead and put the the extra page on by this hinge. So get it where you want it height-wise. Like I said, there's about a quarter of an inch, it's a half an inch shorter, no, quarter of an inch. So this is about an eighth of an inch all the way around. I just made sure I had it lined up and I'm holding it down and just adding glue to this flap or hinge, whatever you wanna call it. It's gonna wrap around to the back. And again, I don't have to cover this back. I could just leave that. You don't hardly even notice that. And so let's see what it feels like or looks like here in a minute. I may not cover this one. All right. The front cover, I have a nice large pocket that we are gonna put right here. And the measurement for this large pocket is five and three quarters wide by eight and three quarter inches tall. So again, it is just one quarter inch all the way around. Um, I'm gonna ink this so you can see where the, where the center is. Um, for the pocket. Now, I need to round these two corners so that it nestles in there nicely. If you want to, you could round these as well. I'm not going to, I didn't on my original one, but I could have. All right, and again, decide which, which paper you wanna do. Again, it's so hard giving up the designs of the paper when you can only use them in one way. All right, I'm gonna lay this one down. It's the same size. Um, what did I say? La -dee -da, five and three quarters by eight and three quarters. And I'm laying it here to remind myself where I need, which corners I need to round. But again, if you forget or round all of them, it's fine. It still looks good. And it nestles right in there. Now, 
I like doing a little notch here and I'm gonna use my circle punch to do that. You can use whatever shape punch, how you like to make notches to make sure they're the same. I like to notch them together. Um, I have the same depth and I'm going to eyeball the center. If you want to mark it, go ahead and mark it before you punch. I'm okay with eyeballing it. Um, yeah, a little bit of ink to that side because so that'll be hard to ink after I glue it down. Okay. Nice. Hope I'm in frame and you guys can see what I'm doing that out of the way okay so these give us this nice deep pocket but it also makes your folio start to become more robust and thicker which is nice now you have a few options what I did with this one is I left the pocket the full length of the journal so that means items can go all the way down so you can have some, a really tall tag, maybe some ribbons, something come out. What I did was I took two of these tags, folded, cut them, leaving you know two together, and folded it in half, and that's keeping it from f falling down in my pocket. See, if I fold it in half and just tuck it in there, I'm gonna lose it. If you don't want to have like something like this folded over and you don't want to have it so large, Bring your glue up. And what I mean by bring your glue up, I'm going to tuck this one in there. I thought that looked cute like that. Um, is when we go to glue this pocket down, get that out of the way. We're going to add glue to these three sides. And if I only put the glue to the bottom, it is going to leave that super deep pocket that I just showed you. If you want to put smaller items in this pocket, bring your glue up as far as you choose and what you want. I'm going to leave mine nice and big because I like having the option of putting large things in there or folding my paper over and not worrying that it's too long to fit but it's your choice. If you want your pocket shorter, just start putting glue in whatever section you want, and then you won't be able to use it. <laughs> okay, and it, I say okay a lot, don't I? It, I'm trying to get about the same amount of space. I'm trying to hold it really secure too so it doesn't wiggle around on me. Um, all the way around was my goal. And then this is the middle back panel. This is our little extended page. So it's also gonna get one of these. And I'm gonna do it the same way, just around the three edges to make this pocket. Whoops, I kinda didn't stay super thin, <laughs> which impacts the width, of course, of something, of whatever I can put in here. Um, if you're able to keep a nice thin bead of glue, you have more real estate in your pocket. This paper with the green really changes the look of the whole folio, doesn't it? All right. Look at that. Yay. I Okay, so then I also had a piece of paper the same size, five and three quarter inches by eight and three quarters. And on this one... I just glued it down, again, to give make it even a little more sturdy. It's this panel. Um, it's not necessary, and as much, as more than anything, I, I didn't really like the look of the hinge I put on this one. So depending on my paper is how I decide if I'm gonna back it or not. I'm gonna save this paper to make something else with or to use for something else, and, um, not cover it because I, you know, you don't really even see that. It just kind of blends into the pattern and I think it looks okay. But if you want to round the corners and glue yours down five and three quarters wide by eight and three quarters tall, if you want to do it like I did with the original. All right, now we are back to grabbing our pages. We're going to make sure they are in the order we want, that if they have a direction, we didn't flip them upside down. 
You like how the patterns look together. And we're gonna sew it together. Now, I get asked this a lot. Could I just throw that on my sewing machine? You know what, if you like your sewing machine and you like to sew, I don't think this is too thick. I think you could, um, I would, you would wanna start here just in the, um, the page that is the short, the shortest, right? That has the, how, how tall is this one? The seven inch page, and I would just stitch from here to here. Um, I wouldn't go all the way up here. It, it, the pages act funny if you do that. Um, or you can do what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna just sew it by hand using a pamphlet stitch. So whether you're putting it on your machine or doing it by hand, I recommend you clip it together to hold it nice um, and even because the pages, again, are not the same size, and it will help it if you do that. Two was probably enough, but three popped out, so that's what we're gonna do. Oh, and I found my paper piercer, yay! I was using a needle in a video recently because I couldn't find it. All right, I'm not making a template because we just have this one signature, basically. And again, I am laying my ruler so I can see the seven inches and I can see where my crease line is. You guys probably cannot, so let me add a little bit of ink hopefully show you what you're doing and I have lots of videos on how to do this type of journal binding and they're all over YouTube so but I'll go through it so it's seven oh gosh I've been saying seven oh there it is oh, it is seven inches with the pattern it was hard to see all right it's seven this this page is seven inches tall so three and a half inches is the center so that's where I'm going to do one hole and then I'm going to just come in I'm gonna come in a half an inch. So I'm piercing, putting a hole at six and a half inches and at a half an inch. To hold my together, it's a three hole. You could do a five hole pamphlet if you wanted to. You could do the sewing machine, whatever you feel like. And again, I'm holding everything together and hopefully when I poke through, I got it right there on the crease and I did. Yay. Okay. And we're just going to stitch it together. So I'm using a waxed thread. And you could use floss. You could use um, whatever color thread you want. You do want something a little bit thicker. Um, my go-tos are the wax thread or the embroidery floss if I want like some of the different colors. Um, you can wax it yourself if you don't, if you want it waxed so it doesn't slip as easily. I've even recently, I did one that I bound with this, um, whatever this is called. <laughs> twine, really skinny twine. Okay, I made it th three times the height. So this is approximately 21 inches long. Okay, we're gonna go in the center hole, out the back, and then it doesn't matter if you go to the top or the bottom, but I'm going to the top. So in the top hole, back inside. Make sure you don't pull your tail out. Skip the center hole, and I'm going in the bottom hole, and then back up the center hole. It's that easy. Easy peasy. All right, and then the, the one thing you just have to make sure and remember you're doing is that you have one piece of your thread on either side of this string. And um, I always check the back to make sure there's nothing cattywampus, everything's nice and snug. And then I'm gonna tie it three times. I do one, two knots, and then I switch hands and I do a third. Now, um, until you know if you wanna decorate this, leave it a little bit longer, you can tie a bow, you can do whatever. If, um, 
what was I gonna say? So that's how I do it. There's other methods and other strategies I know, but that's how I do it and I've not had mine come loose unless I cut them apart because I need to fix something. <laughs> All right, hopefully you didn't get anything upside down. Now's the time to check because if you did, you can cut yours apart <laughs> and redo it. But uh, it looks like everything is the way I wanted it and there's nothing turned upside down. So now we are back to the fun part of let's just decorate. I am going to make a closure. What I did for the original one as I used an eyelet and I just took a little piece of the pattern paper there. There wasn't much going on with the cover here. Um, I've done them where I have put a topper on it and attached ribbon underneath, like taped or glued the ribbon underneath and then had a little tie closure here. There's lots of options for you of how you would like to do that because these papers are so pretty. I don't even think I'm gonna make a topper. I may at some point, um, like I said, I haven't cut these out yet, but if the mood strikes me, you know, I may put one of these quotes on here. Um, a good life is a collection of happy moments. <laughs> do good and good will come to you. You do home sweet, home sweet memories. Like if you wanted to make it a memory paper, a nice day. You know, I might cut one of those out and glue it to the front. I'm not going to take time on camera to you. But again, you can think about how you want to decorate. I will most likely just measure. This is nine inches. I am going to measure because I want this in the center. Four and a half. It's right there. Make a mark. And I'm just going to set an eyelet really quick in mine. And leave it at that because this one is pretty. And um, I like the papers. Now, it is going to come through the pocket. And that is going to reduce... The, the width, how much space I have, because it's gonna stop something from wider from coming down. I hope I'm explaining that. If that if you don't want that, we could have actually set our eyelet for our closure before we glued this pocket on, and then it would be underneath. Things might still get caught on it, but you would be able to hopefully pass by. I'm okay with it. I don't usually put super wide I'm just punching a hole. Super wide things on mine. Um, up to you. I'm going all the way through and not worrying about it. And let me pick an eyelet out. Maybe one of these kind of bronzy, rusty color ones. That'll be pretty with these papers. Like I said, when I, I've been holding on to this paper and having a hard time deciding um, what I wanted to make with it when I got this request. And I thought, oh, well, I'm going to do that. Um, it doesn't use the entire, entire pack of paper, but it does use quite a bit, um, especially if you start decorating and adding a lot of extras. But... Um, I was thinking it, it kind of had more of a fall theme, and it does, um, but not as much as I thought it would. These pomegranates do, but there's quite a few pinks still and that bright green, so I don't know. Tell me if you think it looks like fall or not. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to give you measurements for a bunch of the pockets and belly bands that I put, and we're going to do it like the the prototype that I showed you. These are not in order, so hopefully I'm gonna be able to remember what I did. All right, for this front one, find it by what it looks like. Okay, we have a piece of paper that is five and three quarter inches wide, let's just double check, and three and a quarter inches tall. And this is gonna, sit right here. I'm gonna round this one corner so that it will nestle right in there. And it's gonna be a nice deep pocket for us here at the front of our folio. And again, you can design your pockets and your tuck spots any which way you like, but I'm just showing you one, one option. All right, so I'm gonna glue this one down. And of course, I could have turned the paper that direction um, or for that pattern. It's up, up to you. I like having that pomegranate. 
and it breaks up a little bit of this green, even though I like those birds. Cute, right? All right. And we'll decide later what we're going to put in the pockets. Now, on our prototype, I didn't put anything here because I didn't want to cover up the paper, and I'm kind of feeling the same way now. I think I clipped a little tag on there, so for right now, I'm not going to put anything on that, that side of that page. Okay, for this page, I did, um, and I've got two different sizes here, I did a smaller corner pocket. So, for this page, and then if you flip over, and this page, so these were the, the same papers, I did a four by four inch square, four by four inch square, and then I cut it in a diagonal to get myself two triangles, okay? Four by four inch square, cut on a diagonal. You may want to look at your patterns. I did not before you cut it to know which side you might want to use. I happen to make it out of the same paper that I have going on here, so I'm most likely going to do mine this way with the pomegranate side up, just so that I have some contrast, all right? Um, depending on what papers you, you choose to make yours out of, you may want to wait to cut all your pockets until you have it put together <clears throat> so you can then decide um, you know, which, which side of the paper or which papers you want to use for each pocket and each page. Um, I was trying to have everything prepped before I got on camera just to make it a little bit quicker and easier for you to see what I'm doing. Um, but it did, you know, it does limit your options then for looking at your papers. All right, so I just glued it down like I would any corner pocket. I'm gonna just flip back to this page and we're gonna glue this one down too. So two corner pockets. And I hope I'm not oozing glue everywhere. Give those time to dry while we add additional things. All right, this has the big pocket, so we don't add anything there. These have the side load pockets. So now we're going to flip over. I can't remember if I left. Let's see what I did. Oh, I did put things on the, um, that one I just decorated. I have a belly band and those little stacked pockets and another side of the pocket. So let's go back inside. <laughs> I got to remind myself what I'm doing. All right, here, I'm gonna peek one more time, make sure I don't mess up. Okay, here I have us a piece, I believe, that is going to be a belly band right here. And I like it, let's see what size it is. It is one and a half inches by seven inches. One and a half by seven. I'm going to do a tiny bit of inking just so that it's a little bit done. Um, and again, I might have chosen different patterns or different papers if I was looking at it and saying, okay, I want to put a belly band here. What, what paper do I want? What pattern do I want to use? But I cut all mine ahead of time. But I don't mind that. I kind of like the little um, tile look there. All right, there's, that's a pocket. Okay, we have a belly band. We have these two pockets. All right, this is where I put the stacked pockets. These were really cute. So let's see what paper I have. Um, and I did three. So this is a strip of paper that was one and a half inches wide, and then each of these are three inches um, long. So you need a one and a half inch by a nine inch strip to get three little pockets, okay? And then I'm going to look at my pattern of my paper and decide, do I want like a lot of contrast and do them that way? Do I want to use this pattern? Hmm. I like them turned. Which way do I like them? All right, I think I'm going to do it this way with this brown kind of stripe at the bottom. I do want to ink these. Now, these definitely could have been wider, you know, 
Um, they could have been four inches wide. Um, so again, you design your pockets how you like for your project. But if you want yours to be like mine, mine are three inches by one and a half inches. Okay, those will be cute. And then little things, like little little pockets, tags, tickets, whatever, um, can go in here. And I'm not going to notch them or anything. I'm just going to add the glue. So glue to the three sides. Um, if you are a subscriber to my channel and you're back, thank you. Thank you for coming back and watching me craft. If you're new, welcome, welcome. I hope you like what you see. Um, and I hope you'll consider subscribing. Everybody, if you can just take that one second and give me the thumbs up um, that tells YouTube you like what I'm doing. <laughs> and they show my videos to more people, and that helps me. Um, and if you leave a comment, that's like a super like. So thank you, thank you, and I appreciate y'all's support. That was a good time to put that little plug in. All right. We'll have to find little things to put in those cute little pockets. And this is one of those kind of projects, too. You know, you could add tabs to your pages. You could do um, ribbons and lace and borders. You know, just all kinds of stuff could, could keep going with these. They are just so much fun to do. Now, this one, I've got to decide again on the paper. Oh, look. It's kind of got a different plate and a different cup and saucer, but it, it almost lines up with that little cup. I might be able to make it. Ooh. Not quite. This cup's smaller. But anyway, <laughs> this is going to be a, um, a side, another side load pocket. You know, we kind of have these two. But I just, in fact, I rounded all four corners and just made another tuck spot. We could load it, put it to this side and have it tuck in this way. And maybe we'll do that. Maybe we can make, do I want the cup or do I want to just do a different pattern all together? Hmm. So it can kind of line up right there. Be kind of fun. Let's do that. It is not the right height, though. Oh, maybe it's because I was going to use this piece. Ha! Ah, this is for something else. Let me give you the measurement. <laughs> we'll, we'll, not, we'll stop obsessing over that teacup. This one is two and a half inches by seven and a half. And that, this one is the piece that's going to make this pocket. And it's just going to be a whole lot of pattern going on here. I think I'll use this side and then I could write here if I want to. I could write on it. It's skinny, but it would work. I'm going to do like I did the original. I'm going to round all four corners. And then I'm going to load it to this side just to make it a little different from these pockets. It'd be different, yeah, because those are on the edge of the page. We'll do this one to the inside of the folio. <clears throat> All right, so because I want it to load this way, I'm going to hold it on that side, and then, whoa, my glue's spitting. Add glue to both sides. Okay. And make sure I have it turned the way that I want it. And I'm going to leave, that's probably like an eighth of an inch to the spine there, just to give it a little more room. All right, all these patterns are getting a little crazy. I apologize. Like I said, I probably would have maybe done it a little different if I had looked at my papers put together. All right, what did I do here? Did I do something there? Nope, I left that blank, and I do like seeing those pomegranates. So we'll do that. All right, and so now we have the these panels. And again, I love that window. Oftentimes I do a pad of paper here, a big journaling spot with neutral paper. But I right now, I don't want to commit to that. I'm going to leave it blank or leave it so I can see the pretty image. All right, now... This piece was for this belly band. It is the correct size. And again, it's deciding what piece we want over. And I'm going to have the pink showing. And I'll line it up. That orientation. Um, I'm not rounding the corners on this one because I'm putting it in the middle. And I'm just going to have it be a traditional belly band um, for a large 
journaling card or something in there. If you, again, want to, you could do little pockets here instead. Um, whatever you feel like you could mount photos. I'm using the pattern of the paper to sort of line that up. What it did is instead of having this centered, it brought this to the top of the page and I have a little piece down here or you know, bigger gap here. I'm okay with that. Again, I'm just looking at the paper, but I have so many pretty decorations and things. No telling how, what, what this is all gonna look like at the end. You know, I may take another strip, you know, and do something. So not worried about it at all. All right, now we just have these two pockets. And I've done this style before. I like it a lot. It is a crisscross. So again, look at your patterns of paper and decide which sides you want showing. Do it that way, I can have that pretty flower. Yeah, I'm gonna do it that way. Um, tiny bit of ink. I know I said I wasn't going to spend a lot of time inking. Oh, and we do want to round this corner right here because it's rounded. This one isn't, so I'm going to leave it straight. If that bothers you, round all of them. It didn't bother me, so I left it. <laughs> okay, enough ink. And I'm going to mount these so that I have that pretty flower on top. That's only, it, it makes no difference with you know, which way you, you layer these pockets, they'll work the same way. So I'm gonna put this one down first and just ink on the two sides. Isn't it fun once you start, I think, crafting more and more things that were brand new at one time, right? Like, oh, I've never made a pocket that way. But then you can just use those same techniques and strategies in other projects and it looks completely different because of how you chose to mount it or the type of paper or where you're putting it in your project, but it's the same concepts. And I love that. All right, because if I was not videoing this and I was just making one of these, which I do, by the way, I love to make things, um, even when I'm not on camera, um, and I'm not like writing down all the measurements and planning it for a video. I would be listening to music or listening to a podcast or something like that because it's just so relaxing and fun. Okay, look at that. And now it is time for even more decorating. Let's put a piece of ribbon on here. I did pull out this. I use this a lot, this neutral um, sorry silk ribbon. Um, it just goes with just about everything. And it's junky enough, vintage -y enough that I like it. All right, I'm gonna try something a little different. The ribbon I used on this one is super thick and I literally just put it through and it's staying. Um, this is a little bit different texture. So I'm gonna try, I wanna put a bow on the side. So let's see if I can make that happen. I have not planned this out. I need plenty of room there. I'm sticking the ball through. Okay, that way I don't have to cut it yet, and I can play with it and see how much I need. All right, and then I'll give you guys the measurements. I'm going to wrap it. Should I just wrap it once, or do we like a two? Sometimes when you, like, I love the look, right, of all the extra ribbon, but then when you're actually playing with the journal or using it, it is a pain having that much ribbon. I'm going to go two. And I'm gonna pull this to be the same length so we can make a bow. All right, let me give you a measurement on how much ribbon I just used. <laughs> oh my goodness. And you can do yours however you want, but if you wanna see what I did, it is, that's 23. And I'm gonna to have to do math. Um, 35, and then we gotta get this strip. Um, about 45, 46 inches. Okay, um, and that what that'll give you is to tie with and then to go around twice. And I'm going to do a bow right here on the side. Let's see if we like how it looks. There you go. Turn it whichever way. I like it. This ribbon um, is made from strips of silk and they stitch it together to make it long. And it just so happens I got a stitched piece there, but that's okay. All right, 
So I have no idea how long we have been recording. I'm gonna do a touch of decorating, but I will most likely finish this one off camera um, because I don't want the video to be too, too terribly long. Let me think of something that would be fun. This These kits from Stamperia, like I said, they um, the front and back cover of the paper pad usually has, the this one has those quote cards that I haven't cut out yet, but then it also has all of these really pretty fussy cuts and fun things to play with. And it just, um, I can just spend hours, you know, um, doing all kinds of fun things. I did cut, um, again, with the idea of it would look like some journaling paper. Um, and I could mount a more neutral on this side. But these, I think these are going to be my flaps um, for this big pocket. And I'm going to round the corners. I promise when I'm done, I'm going to dump this. It is full. And again, this will slide in like this. Whoa. There we go. And I'll give you a measurement on this so you have the size. Um, and this, see, I, my eyelet didn't impact because I didn't try to put something the full width in there. So this is four and a half, and it's probably 12. Yeah, by 12. Um, if you don't want to use the full 12 length, I could have even made it like nine inches, right? Or made it even... Um, seven inches and just did a one inch flap. You might need a little more than one inch, but to stick in there. So it just depends on what you're wanting to do and what you're making. I like that teapot. So for example, on this one, this is the one that I want to put in here. I'm going to fold it not in half. I'm going to fold it at this point and it's going to make the lap, the lap, the flap longer. So I folded it at four and a half inches. Okay, so I came in four and a half inches and folded it. And now I have a longer, a longer flap. Isn't that fun? All right. And I'm going to round these. And I'll do these just because I did on the other one. So again, you can change this up. You can look at it differently. And I don't know, it might even be, the pocket is so deep. You could even do it that way and have just a short flap out. Or cut it off and you but just put a tag in there and not even have a flap folding down. So many choices. All right. And there's all kinds of extra pieces of paper. Um... Oh, there's a sheet of the journaling cards in here. And I kept this strip. This was the paper um, that I made the pockets out of. But on this side were these um, squares that I really thought would be cute to decorate with or to make little journaling cards out of. So I saved those. Um, that will flip open. Put a couple of these in here. You could even add a, a tuck spot or something on the back of this if you wanted to. See me giving you all the options. <clears throat> We're just going to stick a few things in since they're cut out. There's a big tall pocket. This, oh, okay, so these would be so cute, right? So let's grab our trimmer and just cut them really quick. <laughs> And stick them in those little pockets so you can see that. It's a little, whoa, a little hard to see. I could get, I can cut these off all the way, trim them around. All right, these ended up being two and a quarter by two and a quarter inch squares. This one says recipes. Put that one in the middle. Another teacup. How cute is that? Oh, you know, I gotta have the pomegranate. I knew these were gonna be the perfect size for something. I will probably later 
really enjoy adding ribbons and things to these. There we go. And then I have these two that I can use for something else. And I have all these little pieces of paper, the mess that I'm making. I can also decorate, you know. Again, I definitely see myself cutting out those quote cards and tucking them um, in um, or decorating the pockets with them, that kind of thing. And I definitely need to make some more fun things to go in all of these pockets. Um, these will be wonderful. You know, I can make other, um, I won't put two teapots together, but I could make other um, cards and things with these and it would be so cute and fun. All right, okie doke, we're gonna call it done. I had a lot of fun making this. I hope you guys liked it. I can't wait to keep decorating it. Oh look, isn't that one cute? We'll stick it right here. Um, I can't wait to start decorating it. I know I'm gonna have a really good time with it. All right, please let me know what you think. And I hope if you decide to make one that um, this wasn't too, too confusing for you and you'll be able to. I'll have all the measurements for you in the description. Thanks for watching and sticking with me, guys. Have a great day.